Yo guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are finally getting around to doing our One Piece review um, part 8, or episode 8, talking about the Dressrosa Saga. Now, I finished the Dressrosa Saga a while ago. I believe it was all the way back in March, which was two months ago now, nearly three. Um, the reason I haven't done this video specifically is because I've already tried making it. I had like two or th I've tried like two or three other times and every time I just had to scrap the video because I was not feeling it. Um, didn't like how it turned out. So that was kind of discouraging and made me not want to do the video, but I know that I need to, to continue on the series. Um, so today I'm going to try again with it. Uh, I took some notes to make it a little bit easier. I took notes before, uh, but because the Dressrosa arc or saga is so big um, and there's just so much to it, it was a bit daunting. Um, a bit of a daunting task task to cover all in one video. Um, so I took a little bit of uh, notes, made it a little bit shorter. Um, so we're going to be uh, keying in on some more specific uh, plot points and ideas that I really did like rather than talking about it in general um, and just talking about specific things that I did like but yeah I'm not going to beat around the bush too much I'm just going to get into it and start talking about the Dressrosa saga of course being the um, punk hazard arc and then of course the Dressrosa arc so if you guys do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already I would greatly appreciate it and also be sure to check out my Discord server down in the description below. We'd love to have you talk about some nerd stuff. You know, it's just awesome. So go ahead and check that out. And yeah, let's get into it. So first things first, of course, we got to talk about Punk Hazard. Uh, this was a pretty cool arc. It was like the first big adventure that um, the Straw Hats have gone on uh, since they passed the, what is it? Not the Grand Line, but gone into the new world uh fishman island was still technically in uh the original area it was just the first big challenge that they had to finally push themselves into the new world and this is their first arc and adventure within the new world uh this was a cool arc we are introduced or reintroduced to uh law uh, the saga definitely delves deep into his backstory and everything about him. Uh, he's one of the main characters of this arc, or the saga rather, and one of the largest focuses of the saga. I mean, Luffy's always the main character, but I think Law is what they focus on most in the saga, just his backstory um, and his connections to Doflamingo and the Don Quixote family. Um, this first arc, though, we are also reintroduced to Smoker and Toshigi, the first time we've seen them since the time skip. Of course, Smoker is one of my all-time favorite characters. He's just so cool. Um, he's the top three favorite One Piece characters for me personally. I love my boy Smoker. Uh, so we get to see more of him. Of course, there's Caesar Clown, who's the main villain. Uh, and yeah. One of my favorite parts about this arc uh, that I do want to talk about real quick is that originally this place was like a jungle or something. It was like where they had a secret lab where Vegapunk uh, was testing stuff. And this island became half cold, half hot. And it's like split down the middle where half the side's covered in snow and ice and glaciers. And the other side is a hellscape. It's just got volcanoes and all that kind of stuff. And the reason is, is because Aokiji and Akainu had a duel there to see who would become the fleet admiral, or was it grand admiral, whatever. Basically take Sengoku's job uh, after the events of Marineford when Sengoku stepped down and he retired finally. Uh, so yeah, they duped it out there for like a week straight just battling. And it completely changed the climate and the landscape of the whole area. And that's one of the things that's kind of talked about in the very beginning when they get there. And they realize it's, why is it like this? And then it's explained that. And yeah, it's just a really awesome detail. Ah, 
Moving on into what actually happens in this arc, uh, one of the main things is this lab, uh, Caesar Clown. He works for um, Don Quixote, uh, the Doflamingo, and um, they're producing artificial devil fruits, and they're basically selling them to Kaido. Uh, everybody, I feel like everybody knows Kaido at this point. Um, you know, main villain of the Wano arc, the big, big dude. Uh, one of the four Yonko or Emperors, whatever. Uh, Doflamingo works for him. He's basically like an arms dealer and gives him artificial devil fruits to, like, make, I don't know, an army of devil fruit users. That's what Kaido is trying to do, is he's trying to create an army to basically take over the world. And so, uh, by taking down... You know the artificial devil fruit, uh, devil the devil fruit production. They're screwing up the whole supply chain, and basically Kaido is going to get pissed at uh, Doflamingo, and there's going to be big problems. So Doflamingo has a lot of stake in like protecting his business because not only is he making money off of it, and he's like super rich. He owns an entire kingdom, you know, Dress Rosa, but um, it's also going to cost him his life, pretty much, because Kaido is bad news. Anyway, it's because of this that this production is heavily protected, and Caesar Clown, who is the scientist behind creating this, um, or one of the lead scientists, because the Vegapunk was also a part of it, but he, but Caesar Clown sort of split away from the, the world government, obviously, and, you know, there's a criminal now. Uh, but he's highly protected, and that's something that, you know, they have to fight it, fight him, fight a bunch of people protecting him, uh, but also law is a big part of that, trying to fight Caesar Clown and take him out, or just really capture him uh, to get him closer to Doflamingo, which we find out more in the Dressrosa arc, why. This arc also plays a big role in why I love One Piece so much. Uh, it's like a prime example about how it's just goofy and fun, but then it has a much darker and sinister side to it that contrasts with that goofiness. Um, one of the main themes of this arc is uh, there's a bunch of children that got kidnapped uh, from their homes and from their families, and they've been being experimented on and been given drugs that they become reliant on so they're like basically forced to stay within caesar's grasp uh because they're addicted to like this drug and uh they tell because part of the thing is they have an inside guy in the the marines uh his name is virgo i believe um and he's like smoker's boss uh and smoker is trying to investigate that whole situation that's another plot point in this arc but virgo basically told them like all these families like yeah your kid's dead and that's just the way it is but they're actually being experimented on so that's one of the things i do really like about one piece is it can get very dark despite the happy-go-lucky goofiness um that's displayed it's those darker themes and uh undertones where this arc really does shine and really one piece in general love those parts like i've said um yeah that's basically all i have to talk about this arc of course there's stuff i'm glossing over like there's like subplots and big like fights that happen luffy of course fights the main villain of this arc it's a whole thing um but i'm ready to move on to the next arc uh before i do of course we would give the a score um if i had to give this a score I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. It was pretty entertaining. Um, reintroduced a lot of really good characters, being uh, Wa and Toshigi and Smoker, them specifically, uh, as well as like Aokiji and Akainu, uh, with some like world building there and uh, lets us know what's going on in the world uh, since you know since everybody was in hiding they've i guess been really uh relatively uneducated about what's been going on in the world around them 
and uh, they're sort of like us, the reader. We don't know either. So learning about stuff like that is really interesting, and those are also parts about One Piece that I really love. So yeah, overall, nothing super duper spectacular yet. Um, so seven out of 10. Now, moving into the actual Dress Rosa arc, I'm just gonna start off by saying that this arc was one of my favorites so far in the series. Like, uh, probably top three for me, honestly. Maybe even my favorite arc of all time, not sure. Uh, but I absolutely adored this arc. Uh, it had everything in it uh, to me. Uh, the mystery aspect of this it had an amazing mystery and the build-up was crazy of course Doflamingo as a villain and as a character had been built up since Skypea when he was first introduced uh, with Bellamy and of course Bellamy does make a return in this arc as well that's not even one of like the main things though um, Rebecca who's a character we learn about uh, who fights in the Colosseum also, the whole Coliseum thing, I'll get to that in a minute, uh, but her relationship with the character uh, known as the Toy Soldier, um, that whole mystery and thing, like the mystery and thing, the whole mystery thing, as well as like the mystery of the kingdom and everything and how it all comes together in the end and we finally know who's who, who's related to who, um, like what happened exactly. Uh, once we figure out that, at like towards the end of the arc it all just came together in my mind and it blew me away um which is why i absolutely love it now talking more specifically i did mention there is a coliseum uh this dress rosa is very much based on like um italy and spain and um greece all those kind of western southwestern european mediterranean countries um, kind of a bunch of like an amalgamation of those kinds of countries in one uh, which is really cool I like the landscape and the I don't know the overall style of it uh, the characters the the way that they dress and like I don't know it's very reminiscent of just a bunch of different cultures uh, in that general area and with that like I said yes the Colosseum uh, the Colosseum does play quite a major role in this arc. Um, long story short, Luffy ends up entering the Colosseum, but he cannot use his name Luffy uh, because everybody knows who Straw Hat Luffy is. Of course, this is post Marine Ford, so I mean, everybody knows Straw Hat Luffy as the guy who had the balls to stand up against the world government and try to rescue Fire Fist Ace. So he uses the code name or alias Lucy so original right and he wears like this long beard so if you have ever seen um, those images of uh, One Piece with like Luffy with a beard or Zoro with like the mustache and thing um, their disguises I, I know I saw that a long time ago and I was really confused obviously now I have the context um, so I just want to say that the, the tournament stuff was really cool i thought that it was well done the fights were cool there was a lot of interesting side characters that were introduced uh in this coliseum as well as well as like again we see more into rebecca's character uh and her backstory and the, the whole the great gladiator dude free of his name uh but yeah if you know you know with all that stuff I don't want to spoil it too, too bad here. But yeah, there's some pretty important stuff that goes on there. Uh, we're also reintroduced to Sabo. Um, because this is, I mean, th that's a big spoiler. I don't know why I chose not to talk about the other thing, but never mind. I'll talk about that later. Uh, but Sabo, he's reintroduced. Uh, of course, he was presumed dead um, when in the, what is it, the post-Marine Ford arc where we get Luffy's backstory and all that with Ace and Sabo. He's presumed dead, uh, but he comes back and now he's like a uh, dragon, uh, his right-hand man in the Revolutionary Army. So he shows up, Luffy and him have like a whole moment there. And what they're fighting for in the Colosseum uh, is Ace's devil fruit. 
now you might be wondering how is that possible because ace already ate the devil fruit like huh well we actually learn i don't know if this is the first time we learn it uh but it's the first time i remember hearing about it and that's that whenever somebody eats a devil fruit that is the only one of that devil fruit in the entire world so once they eat it well it's too bad like nobody else can get it while you're alive however once you eat the devil fruit and you end up dying that devil fruit is randomly returned to the world so it'll appear randomly somewhere else um so while it's been while you're alive only one exists if that makes sense so since ace died his devil fruit returned to the world and it was captured and so now it's known as like oh it's the fruit of fire fist ace and so now sabo and luffy are kind of in the tournament to um obtain ace's devil fruit to protect his memory it really feels like this arc just has everything like i said before um we int reintroduced sabo we got the straw hat crew here uh there's plenty of new characters new villains um new side characters that are introduced in this tournament battle thing um the navy is all here too they're closing in on do flamingo and the straw hats just everybody is in this one spot at just the same time and it makes for a really tense and uh just overall entertaining environment um i'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit stuff happens okay uh talking about do flamingo probably my favorite villain in this entire series so far uh if dress rosa isn't my favorite arc um so far like i mean it's at least top three but if it isn't my all-time favorite then what i do know is do flamingo is indeed my all-time favorite villain uh just something about him uh just being really chill uh and like kind of goofy but then turns around and he's like really sadistic and cruel uh he's just such a weird dude but such a fantastic bad guy uh, especially when you get into law's past and understand his connection to him uh with corazon who is uh do flamingo's brother uh who was a spy i guess and was sort of uh, law's father figure and uh i'll talk more about that here in just a minute but also seeing like doflamingo's backstory about how like the nobles were treated and his whole superiority complex and all that stuff understanding doflamingo as a character from a young age all that stuff was wild and yeah he's just such an awesome villain not to mention because of his sort of sadistic personality his whole uh devil fruit being like the string string fruit just makes a lot of sense and it's really cool seeing that kind of fruit in the hands of somebody like him where basically he's able to manipulate people like marionettes um, i think that that is just awesome and it's such a perfect power for a guy like him now moving into law's backstory and his connection to doflamingo talked about it before basically law was sick with this disease the white disease or whatever um, killed everybody in his town except for him but he was slowly dying and he's just a little kid so he rolls up on doflamingo says that he's gonna like kamikaze himself but then doflamingo is like all right i like you kind of and so la is like a feisty little kid anyways he sort of joins their crew a bit uh, meets this guy named corazon who can't talk and that's his whole thing he's silent um and he sort of fights with him a little bit but then they end up growing a relationship turns out corazon can talk and he has this whole mute bubble devil fruit power uh he's doflamingo's brother like i said and um yeah turns out he's actually a spy he's one of like the best agents that the world government has and he hates his brother like his brother is a terrible dude well he loves his brother but he knows that his brother is terrible and he's putting the rest of the world 
above his own feelings for his brother because he knows that what his brother is doing is terrible. So he's willing to do what's necessary to stop him. Now stuff goes down. The only They go off and escape together, Corazon and Law, and they try to figure out a way to cure uh, Law's disease. They end up finding the op-op fruit, which is OP, OP fruit. Like, it's OP. That, that was a st stupid joke. Dismiss that. Um, yeah. It allows him to, like, do a surgery on his own body and remove the disease. And he's kind of chilling now. But in the process, there's this whole scene. Corazon ends up dying to his own brother's hand, which is why... And of course, Corazon, like I said, was um, Law's like caretaker, father figure. They grow very close, since Corazon was basically saving Law's life. Um, so yeah, Doflamingo kills him. So now Law hates Doflam Doflamingo even more, and that's why they have their whole backstory. Now, sort of skipping to the end, there's a lot I can talk about with like the Toy Soldier and the Riku Dynasty and all of that stuff, the history stuff, and, like, uh, the terrible night, or whatever it was called, where Riku did the whole thing, and killed everybody, the Mad King, or whatever, all that stuff I could go into detail and talk about, I'm just not going to, uh, here, um, if you want to know, I think that that's the best part of this arc, um, so I would recommend you guys just read it, I don't want to talk about it here, if you're interested, or you can look it up and ruin it for yourself. But I'm not going to be the guy to do that for you. So, go check it out. Um, but, skipping right on right on ahead to sort of the climax of this story. Our crew gets separated from each other. Uh, half the crew goes on the the Mary, or not the Mary, the, the Sunny. And they go on towards Zhao, or Zhao, whatever. Uh, moving into like the whole cake saga area they kind of do their own thing and half the crew is here on dress rosa still um so the crew that's on dress rosa here um they're fighting against all of doflamingo's goons um all of his family because it's like a mafia all these like mafia leaders and all their little goons they're fighting against each other because doflamingo has everybody trapped in what is a basically a giant bird cage um, he uses his strings to cover an entire island uh, in a cage. And the, the cage is like slowly closing in. And his, um, what's it? The strings are like razor sharp and they like cut through buildings because of course they do. So, yeah. They're trying to escape his thing. But the only way to get that to stop is by defeating Doflamingo. And they have to reach like the top of the castle on this mountain. So everybody's trying to race to the top, fighting off people. It's a whole thing. It is in this race against time and battle with Doflamingo uh, that we get the iconic scene of Doflamingo about to step on uh, Law, but then Luffy puts his foot in front of him. That whole scene, as well as, of course, Gear 4, which is just really awesome. Of course, I saw it coming because. If you look at the chapters at the beginning of the volume, you can see, oh, Gear 4. However, when it finally did show up, it was awesome. Uh, and I really did feel a personal sense of achievement when seeing Gear 4 show up. Uh, because Gear 4, everybody knows, uh, shows up much later in the series. And for me to actually be there myself, it, was, it felt accomplishing. Because I was like, I finally made it to Gear 4. Like... I don't know. That was just a personal thing for me. Um, that was one of the reasons why I really liked it, because the payoff. Things happen, things happen, and of course, Luffy ends up beating Doflamingo, uh, which was an awesome fight, just like, within like, you know, he did it in the nick of time, as he always does. And, yeah, just everything leading up to that point, this whole arc, this whole saga even, but just this arc in particular was just so perfect and uh yeah probably my like i said before at the beginning of this segment probably my favorite arc in the whole series so far 
However, by the end of this, we do learn that there still is more in store because, um, yeah, since they took down Del Flamingo and his whole artificial devil fruit production, artificial devil fruit, that's like a tongue twister, um, Kaido is pissed. And we finally get to see Kaido in all of his glory. You get a little bit of an understanding of who Kaido is, um, and he shows up there's some stuff of course big mom is mad too because um luffy screwed with her factory and all that back in fishman island so now those two emperors are mad and rightfully so because their whole empires have basically been toppled by one man luffy of all people so yeah and we get to see the other side of the straw hat crew what they're doing and i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly they encounter kaido i could have the fuzzy memory about that um but we still know that they're separated and kaido does show up overall this is like the perfect one piece arc a lot of people complain about the coliseum segment of this arc and say that it's boring and uninteresting and while I think that some of it was a little bit slower, admittedly, a little a little bit of a drag to get through the Colosseum parts. Um, I don't know, I didn't mind it. It was still fun. It was battle action. It wasn't so, like, cheesy and stupid as, like, something like Long Ring Long Land. Um, it was, like, Colosseum battle. Like, like, it's awesome. So, I don't really get, like, a lot of the complaints about that. It was easy to get through. So, anyways, if I had to give this arc a score, um, I'm hesitant to say 10, but I think I'm going to give it like a 9, 9.5 out of 10. It's the perfect One Piece arc. The best one in the series so far. It's right there with Enos Lobby for me. Um, Enos Lobby was an amazing arc um this dress rosa was equally as good so right next to it even more so maybe just because i like a lot of the subplots more than enos lobby because enos lobby was just so focused on robin but this also had like do flamingo and law so to me this arc had more to it for me personally so i'd put it maybe slightly above enos lobby but they're neck and neck Anyways, guys, that is going to about do it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I know this was a long time coming. Again, two months since I've read this. So it's kind of ridiculous that I haven't done this already. Again, I tried. Um, yeah, didn't like how it came out, but finally have what I think is a decent video. So I hope you guys do it, did enjoy. And if you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, also, go check out my Discord. It's awesome. Bunch of people just chilling, hanging out, talking about nerd stuff. So that'll be in the description below. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.